author, educator, and Afro-Latin poet Frank X. Walker is the youngest and the first African-American appointed to serve as Poet Laureate for Kentucky. We'll talk about that honor, what drives his artist activism, and why he considers himself a teacher first. A conversation with the writer who lives out loud on the page, Frank X. Walker, will be joining us on Connections. It's good to have you, Mr. Frank. It's great to be back. You've had a really good year. Congratulations on being the first, a lot of firsts, <laughs> with the Poet Laureate of Kentucky. How, how do you still feel with that? I mean, is that still something you think, wow, I never thought this would be happening? Well, ask me another year when I've survived <laughs> it all because it, it doubled my, my speaking and, and, yeah. and teaching and touring schedule. Yeah, it's not just an honor you get a plaque that you can, you know, put on the mantle of the wall that comes with a lot of responsibilities to advance literary causes for Kentucky. Well, you don't even get the plaque, you just get the work. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even give you a little plaque. No, plot. it's oh, like, go to work. <laughs> but you've always done that, so mm -hmm. it's just probably more intense, but that's always been part of your mission is engaging and, mm -hmm. and, and having this social activism part of you, and that is very evident in your latest collection of poems called Turn Me Loose, The Unghosting of Medgar Evers. First of all, why did you choose Medgar Evers and the approach you took to tell the story of his legacy? Well, I really feel like I didn't choose Medgar that. Um, that he chose me indirectly. You know, I was responding to a poem that Lucille Clifton had written that was really a short poem about, you know, being present at the third trial of Dela Beckwith mm -hmm. and seeing that Beckwith had become an old man and, and Mega never ever would become an old man. And that contrast really kind of stuck with me and I carried it for several days and then I started some precursory investigating what I knew about the story and then I asked my students uh, to name the important assassinations of the era and none of them mentioned Medgar. Mm. They went straight to Malcolm or, yeah. or Dr. King. Some of them mentioned the Kennedy brothers. Nobody mentioned Fred Hampton and mm. none of them mentioned Medgar and, and that kind of sealed the deal for me. You know, as an educator, I thought that was an opportunity. And, you know, I started, you know, investigating these, you know, what would become poems uh, later and made a decision very early on uh, to try to tell the story and really use the voice of, of the assassin as the core of it so that people could maybe understand where violence connected to racism comes from. Mm -hmm. You know, what's the psychological mindset that produces such an outcome. Mm -hmm. And one of the voices you use is the widow of Medgar Evers, Merle, Edgar, Meg, Ed, Merle uh, who we still see, uh, who's, you know, was at the inauguration, who was at the 50th yes. anniversary of the March on Washington, speaking as eloquently as ever. And there's a poem at the very end called Gift of Time that you, uh, in her imaginary voice, write. And if you would share that with us, I'd be most appreciative. Sure. Gift of Time, Merle Evers. When I was able to see beauty in a world littered with scars, when I discovered stores of memories that a bullet couldn't quit, when I watched a son grow into his father's face, his laugh, his walk, I saw how faith could be restored and was finally able to imagine that before he fell in love with guns, before he lost his mother and his childhood, before he needed a reason to hate, to feel threatened, to push back against imaginary walls, collapsing in on him like August heat and no fan. I imagine before all that, little Byron was good. He was clean. He was innocent. And I finally understood that trouble don't last always. The words of Frank X. Walker. You can see and hear more of them next time on Connections, Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time on KET2 and Sunday at 1.30 Eastern Time on KET. And you can watch online anytime at KET.org slash connections. Hope you'll join us. <laughs>